All right, so in the last example, I said uh, in section eight of propositional logic, I said P is Q true, Q is true, and then referring to the truth table, I said P implies Q or Q implies P is true. Um, well, this is a true argument, right? Uh, this is a true argument. This is also a true argument, Q implies P. Uh, this one is also a true argument, uh, P if and only if Q, all right? Um, so all three are true arguments. So I can actually call them inference rules. There is no harm with this. They're not just the inference rules uh, that I mentioned to you guys. Um, um, uh, well, why, is, well, why are those arguments true? Well, look, this argument tells me if my premise P and Q are true, remember the truth table, the very first um, truth table we uh, had. So when P and 2 are both true arguments, well, then this implication conditional sentence is also true. It has nothing to do with the values of, not values, meanings of P. So P, for example, can be a sentence like, an atomic sentence like Canada is on the north of the United States. And Q can be an atomic sentence which says Australia is an island. So both are true uh, uh, statements, uh, uh, sentences, but P implies Q is actually, in English, has, or in any language, has no meaning, right? If P is a, a country on, on the north of the United States, well, then uh, Australia is an island. Well, I mean, uh, yes and yes, but, you know, this, this if-then statement makes no sense in English, right? Or in any language. But once again, we're not really interested in, in propositional logic. We're not really interested in uh, the meaning of those uh, statements. We are just interested in their truth values. And so if P and RQ, I'm sorry, if P and Q are true uh, statements, well then this P implies Q is also a true statement. Therefore, deducing P implies Q, given that P and Q is a valid argument. Same here, by the way, right? Q implies P is also true because both arguments are true. And because these two are true, I can basically say by conjunction, if and only if statement is also true. Okay? So as, as, as simple as this, in fact. Um, so that was one question. The other question was, um, is there sort of a way of understanding when we are going to use direct proof, when we are going to use indirect proof, etc.? Uh, it's 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 a hard hard to answer, right? I mean, there is no really uh, uh, sort of a certain rules like you know you have to use this in in that proof and and something else in uh, other types of proofs. I'll try to sort of. Uh, 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 group them is like a when you can use what, when you can use uh, uh, what else. Um, but proving an argument is, is an experience, all right? Um, so when you prove an argument, you actually uh, apply rules. And then by applying those rules, you make just logical deductions. I, I, it, to me, it likes, you know, chess. Chess has a lot of rules, right? You know, every... Uh, you know, the, the moves are rules. You can't really move everything any way you like. So you have to know the rules. But consider an, a, an experienced uh, a chess player like Kasparov versus an uh, inexperienced chess player like the person who knows the rules but never played before and so playing for the very first time. So clearly, uh, the way they will play is going to be different. So, for example, an experienced chess player, when he makes a move, he will probably see uh, 20 steps afterwards, all right? So, as an experienced uh, person, I can make a claim, and then I will probably, I'm not claiming, I, will, I, I always do, but I will probably see the end of the proof when I make that claim. But again, this comes with an experience. So, a new player may just make a move without really seeing what's going to be next or, you know, what potential uh, outcomes would be next. So again, this comes with an experience. So as you solve more and more examples, you are actually going to gain more and more experience. And this is exactly why I put those lecture notes and videos 
um, before everything uh, else. I want you to get some experience before we start doing sort of formal or informal arguments and proofs in, 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 in microeconomic theory or in, in game theory, another course that I'm also teaching. Um, so how can you gain experience? Well, definitely work on uh, the problem set questions. Definitely work on the examples that I shoot on, on videos. So more than half of those videos are actually about problems, examples. And what I sort of suggest strongly, once you sort of go over them just to get an idea, um, just you know, write down the statement and uh, before looking at the video, try to prove that statement by yourself. Okay, just try it. Give yourself a few minutes if you're stuck. Try different approaches, direct, indirect, whatever. Well, if your memory is not perfect, that means you, you haven't yet memorized the proof. And so you will probably not recall every step. Fine, that's even better. Well, just, just push yourself to see if you can come up till the end of the proof. If you can't, fine, go back to the video and see what assumptions I made at what step. And then stop it there. I mean, don't go on till the end. Uh, continue for the rest. All right. So if you do this once or twice, or it, it, once where you basically prove all the arguments, well, I think that's enough of experience. Nevertheless, this is not a course on propositional logic. I don't want you to be an expert on it. I just want you to have some practice on uh, proving arguments. That's it. Um, so, uh, you know, what I can use and uh, what type of proof method I can use and when. So, this is what I'm going to talk about next. So, if you are proving a conditional sentence, a uh, statement, I'm sorry, something like P implies Q. Uh, by the way, when I write P, uh, it doesn't have to be a, a uh, what is it, uh, atomic sentence. For example, uh, not P and Q implies uh, not P or not Q. All right? Something like this form. So, if I have this sort of conditional statement, we all know that we start basically assuming P, all right? So we assume this assumption for conditional derivation, and then we make some logical deductions. What we want to show, we want to show uh, our Q, all right? So at some point, I want to derive Q, all right? Once this is done, that means P implies Q, Q is actually proven, all right? Well, th this is a, what we call a direct proof. So how can I prove something like this uh, in an indirect proof? Well, simple, you assume P, all right? And then, uh, you know, you continue, you make some deductions. Uh, and then at some point you, you can say, you know what, I cannot reach to Q, all right? So directly, I can't go there. Let me go there indirectly, all right? Think something like, um, I, there's a path or there's a final location I want to be at, but the path towards there, the, the, the shortest path, it's in the shortest um, from what perspective, right? Um, it has some sort of river and I don't know how to swim and the river uh, seems like a dangerous path. So you know what? I'm going to go over, over a bridge, but it's like, you know, five kilometers farther. And so it, it, it means a longer walk, maybe, all right? So the thing is sometimes, it's easier, quote unquote, to go indirectly to the same path. So kind of indirect proof. I don't know if you like my analogy. I'm not even sure if I like my analogy. Anyway, so uh, we deny the assumption, all right, not Q, and then make logical deductions by using not Q and P and all the other uh, sort of deductions or sort of the uh, conclusions we got. And so at some point, I want to get some contradiction. All right. S what kind of, what is contradiction? Contradiction is something like I have a statement A and I have a negation of A. Okay. Uh, I intended to write B uh, for some reason. S so, so A again can be an atomic sentence. It can be a more complicated, something like P or, or Q, but I also get not P or Q, something like this. So they both cannot be true. Remember our atomic sentences and hence our arguments are either true or false. They can't be both. They can't be neither. And so once I get a, some sort of a, a contradiction there, 
um, well, then that means not Q cannot be true. So Q must be true. And in fact, I reached to the same conclusion, right? Here it was directly, here it was indirectly, all right? Um, but nevertheless, if you want to prove a conditional statement, you have to start by assuming the first part and deduce the second part directly or indirectly. Um, well, if your Q is, well, the second part uh, has something like, I don't know, Q or R, all right? It's a, a combination of two atomic sentences, for example, with an OR. Well, proving this with a, a direct approach is, uh, is possibility, all right? Uh, but proving this indirectly it may not be so easy. Uh, I'm going to compare this case with this. Uh, P implies Q and R, something like this. All right. So this is kind of easier, well, depending on the environment, uh, the framework of the entire uh, argument and proof, obviously. But so here, for example, once I make assumption P, all right, I have to first sort of um, I need to show Q, all right? And then I also need to show R. So I need to prove both of them so that Q and R, so I, I'm going to say, well, by uh, uh, a junction, uh, Q and R is also true. So when it is something like this, and if direct approach doesn't work, you can always go for direct uh, approach. If it doesn't work, fine, uh, switch to indirect approach. All right? This is usually, again, it's a, a try and error. You don't have to see it, see it uh, uh, immediately uh, if you don't have the enough experience. Just go with the direct approach. If it doesn't work, well, switch to the indirect. So if, you, if I can't deduce Q directly, well, then uh, assume not Q and then try to get some contradiction to prove Q. And similarly, if you cannot reach R directly, assume not R and then, you know, try to uh, get a contradiction and then therefore prove R. Here, however, you can't really do this not Q, not R business. That's the thing, all right? If you want to prove this, by in an indirect approach, you have to prove, I'm sorry, you have to assume not Q or R, all right? Why is that? Well, if you assume not Q, you may actually not reach a contradiction, okay? And if you don't get a contradiction, uh, well, you may not get a contradiction simply because Q is actually not true. So not Q is in fact a true argument. So therefore, you shouldn't be getting an, a contradiction at the first place. So not getting a contradiction, all right, um, doesn't mean that Q is a true or, or false argument, all right? Because remember, Q or R is like either Q is true or R is true. So both do not have to be true. So you don't know which one is true. So you don't know which one of those arguments are going to give you the a contradiction. So therefore, when you want to prove something like this uh, by an indirect approach, you cannot sort of separately apply the indirect approach to Q and R, but you have to apply this, you know, I deny my uh, conclusion to the entire uh, uh, statement Q or R. All right, so that's sort of one hint I can give you. Um, other than this, Yeah, I mean, as I said, is 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 um, you know there are millions of different ways of proving something, um, and you may not be able to see it. That's perfectly fine. Just 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 try the uh, standard approach, uh, the direct approach. If it doesn't work, jump to the indirect one. Um, sort of the general um, approach in in proofs is that once we have a sort of a sentence, we actually uh, either assumption or maybe it's a true uh, premise. So we actually want to break it into uh, the smallest pieces, the atomic uh, sentences. Um, because once you break it down, all right, later I can, uh, I, can, I can combine them with each other and make it more complicated. All right, so here, for example, I break it down, all right, and then later I bring it up and say Q and R is true. 
All right. So once I have, for example, an assumption, something like not P and not Q. All right. So uh, writing then, all right, well, by simplification, not P is true, not Q is true, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So simplify your assumptions or your premises. Uh, that's, that's always uh, uh, going to help you. And, and, and you usually, if you have something, a bracket, all right, that there's some statement in the bracket and the negation, for example, in front of the bracket. Well, that's tough, right? Okay, because that's, that's not walnut. Uh, this, this negation, I don't really know how to open this, this, uh, this thing up. So we usually try to get rid of these negations in front of a statement. It could be, by the way, simply not P, right? So if you want to prove something like this, okay? Example, uh, let's suppose I have an, uh, a, a theorem or argument, something like this. Um, Q and R, I'd, I'm just making it up, okay? Uh, implies not P, okay? So if, if it is something like this, uh, proving this directly is probably harder. The first thing you may want to do is just get rid of this not or the negation. How I can do that? Um, just deny the conclusion, right? So say not not P, assume this. So this double negation, it becomes P. So again, whenever you have a negation, especially in front of a, a parentheses, uh, a proof by a contradiction or indirect proof is going to help you to get rid of this uh, negation. So in such arguments, you may actually prefer to do proof by uh, indirect proof rather than direct proof. Any question?